Recording in progress. Cool. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Paya. I'm a PhD student from Durham University, and I'm going to be presenting a talk on comparing um, quantum and classical algorithms for max 2 size. Um, this, is, uh, this work was done in collaboration with Adam and Lewis, and it was supervised by Nick and Viv. And there's an archive preprint that you can check out if you're interested. So the aim of this work was to compare the hardness of problem instances for various continuous time quantum computing algorithms and a classical algorithm. Um, so the problem that we're studying is the maximum two sat viability problem, or max two sat. And this is an NP-hard combinatorial optimization problem. Um, and even though max, max two sat is NP-hard, um, annual competitions for max sat and sat have produced very good classical solvers uh, for this problem, which have found applications in areas such as software verification, planning, design debugging, as well as other constraint satisfaction problems. So for our numerical analysis, um, we've, uh, we've used instances that were generated in this paper by Croissant and her co co-workers. So these instances were selected to be hard for um, a particular type of quantum annealing. And we've also um, used randomly generated instances, um, which we call the typical instances. So why do we want to compare the hardness um, of problem instances for the different algorithms? Well, there are two motivations. Firstly, um, we want to find out whether small-sized problem instances are a good representation of larger um, problem instances in terms of hardness. And this is an important question to consider for many um, studies that numerically um, simulate um, these algorithms on small sizes. Um, secondly, um, we want to find out whether a simple hybrid approach that runs um, some combination of a quantum and or classical algorithm in parallel is able to perform well. So the intuition here is that if two different algorithms uh, find different um, instances easier and harder, then um, one algorithm can speed up the instances that are hard for the other algorithm. So um, I'm going to talk a bit more about Max2Sat here. Um, the input to Max2Sat is a Boolean formula phi in two conjunctive normal form. So I've given an example of such a formula here. In general, it needs to be a conjunction of clauses where each clause is a disjunction of literals and a literal is either a Boolean variable or a negated Boolean variable. So conjunction, disjunction, and negation um, are equivalent to the logical and, or, and not operators, which I've colored in red, orange, and purple, um, respectively. Um, so then the problem is to find an assignment to these Boolean variables such that the number of clauses that are satisfied, i.e. the number of clauses that evaluate to true, is maximized. So to solve max 2 sat using continuous time quantum computing methods, we need to map it to a problem Hamiltonian. Um, so to do this, we start off by encoding a single clause as a Hamiltonian term, which is shown on the right. Um, here we use a notation where the literal li represents the variable xi if i is positive, um, and if i is negative, it, re it represents the negated version of that variable. So this term adds an energy contribution of one um, if the basis state, um, if the assignment corresponding to the basis state does not satisfy the clause, and if it does satisfy the clause, it does not contribute any energy. And then the full problem Hamiltonian can be um, attained by taking a sum over these clause terms for every clause in the Boolean formula. And the problem becomes to find the ground state of this Hamiltonian. So, as you all know, uh, one method for finding the ground states of Hamiltonians in a continuous time quantum computing setting is AQC. So here we implement a time-dependent Hamiltonian um, using the transverse field driver Hamiltonian, and we start in its ground state, which is the equal superposition state, and using a linear schedule, we turn off the driver Hamiltonian while slowly turning on the problem Hamiltonian. And then, um, so for our instances, we have unique ground states, so then the success probability uh, which is the probability of finding the ground state at the end of the um, sweep is given uh, here. And so our measure of hardness for an instance for AQC is the time required to 
um, attain a 99% success probability, or T0.99. Um, another method in continuous time quantum computing is quantum walk computation. So here the Hamiltonian's, Hamiltonian is time independent, and it's parameterized by a hopping rate gamma. So we use a heuristic value for the hopping rate, which is equal to the average energy spread of the problem Hamiltonians divided by 2n. We also use the same driver and problem Hamiltonians as for AQC. Um, so then in quantum walk, um, in general, you don't have a probability of near unity for um, attaining the ground state, for measuring the ground state. So in general, you need to take repeat measurements and so we define an average single run success probability, um, which is shown here. And this is for measurements that are taken uniformly at random within the interval of t and t plus delta t. So for our simulations, we set t equal to zero and delta t equal to 100. So now going on to our results, uh, um, and I should mention that hardness for quantum walk is inversely related to this average single run success probability. And going on to our results, um, here we show um, the quantum walk average success probability at the top and the adiabatic duration at the bottom uh, for instances um, separated by their hardness. So in the top left plot, we've separated the, the instances by hardness for quantum walk, where the lightest shade of green represents the 10th percentile instances for quantum walk hardness the darker shade of green represents the 90th percentile instances for quantum walk hardness, and the, um, the blue data points offer the 99th percentile instances. And we plot the um, quantum walk success probability for these um, percentiles. And uh, this orange data point is, for the, uh, is the median value for the um, instances that are hard for quantum annealing. Um, and to each of these percentiles, we've um, given them a linear fit and the gradients, um, so the scaling exponents are shown on the right. Um, so, uh, yeah, so the fact that these um, lines are spreading indicates that as you increase the problem size, the difference in hardness between the easiest and hardest um, instances is increasing. And the, and the placement of the orange point shows that the instances that are hard for quantum annealing are also hard for quantum walk. However, not as hard as they are for quantum annealing, which indicates that there's, while there's a correlation between quantum annealing and quantum walk hardness, it's not perfect. So um, potentially a hybrid strategy involving quantum walk and quantum annealing would be beneficial. And in the bottom, we show similar plots for AQC. So this time we're plotting the AQC duration for um, AQC hardness percentiles. Um, and we get similar results, with the main difference being that the 99th percentile instances scale considerably worse than the rest of the percentiles, which is to be expected. And the implication of this is that, um, uh, is that um, a hybrid strategy involving AQC would be particularly beneficial for solving these instances. So in this slide, we um, show similar plots, but with a different comparison. Um, so we've swapped over the algorithms that um, are being used to categorize the hardness. So in the top, we're plotting quantum walk, um, median quantum walk success probabilities for AQC hardness deciles. And in the bottom, we're plotting median AQC durations for quantum walk hardness deciles. And the fact that harder deciles correspond to harder instances um, shows that there's a correlation between quantum walk and AQC hardness. Um, and looking on the right, um, the fact that this um, plot is decreasing throughout shows that this correlation does not only exist for the easier instances, but also for the harder instances. So to make a comparison with classical algorithms, we've um, counted the number of times a classical algorithm called mix B and B um, accesses the problem specification and we call this the number of calls or n calls. And in this histogram, we show the approximate probability density of the logarithm of the number of calls for the typical instances in green and the instances that are hard for quantum annealing in orange. 
So both of these distributions are double peaked, which indicates that there's some separation in hardness um, for the instances uh, for this particular classical algorithm. And the instances which are hard for quantum annealing um, lie on the, uh, mostly lie on the hard tail of the distribution for the typical instances, which implies that there's a correlation in hardness for, between quantum annealing and this particular classical algorithm. And in the bottom, uh, we show a table um, that shows the correlations in hardness between different algorithms. Um, so we can see that the correlation in hardness between the two quantum algorithms and the um, classical algorithm are lower than the correlation between quantum walk and AQC. Um, so this implies that um, a hybrid approach involving a classical algorithm and a quantum algorithm would be um, better than one involving quantum walk and AQC. Um, finally, uh, we also analyzed satisfiable instances. Uh, so this is because satisfiable instances are classically easy, um, as 2SAT is in P. There's a linear time classical algorithm for 2SAT. Um, and so we're looking at how hard they are for these, uh, for quantum walk and AQC here. And we find that while um, for both quantum walk and AQC, satisfiable instances are easier, um, they appear for quantum walk, um, the scaling appears to be exponential. Um, and for AQC, um, the results aren't as conclusive. Um, so the, um, what we can get from this is that um, a, hybrid, a hybrid algorithm involving um, a classical algorithm would be, also be beneficial for solving these instances uh, that are satisfiable efficiently. Uh, so to summarize, uh, we found that there are correlations between quantum walk, AQC, and quantum annealing hardness, but these correlations aren't perfect. So this implies that a hybrid, stri a hybrid strategy involving these algorithms would likely be useful in real-world computation. And the proportion of hard instances grows as you increase the problem size. Um, and we found weaker correlations between the quantum and classical algorithms than between quantum walk and AQC. Um, and finally, we've identified certain weaknesses that can be overcome with a hybrid approach, uh, such as the um, very poor scaling of a small subset of instances for AQC, and the fact that these quantum algorithms can't solve satisfiable instances efficiently. So I'll end my talk there. Thank you for listening. How did you run? Uh, work? How did you run AQC? Uh, so we numerically integrated the Schrodinger equation um, yeah, with the linear schedule and um, transverse field driver Hamiltonian. Yeah. You could do it for twenty qubits. Sorry. How much? Uh, how much did it take for twenty? Uh, the microphone is on. Uh, did you say for 20 qubits? Yes. Um, so if we, yeah, I should have mentioned this, but for quantum walk, we went up to 20 qubits, but for AQC, up to 15. Um, so that's why there's no um, orange data point on this graph as well. Um. Hello, is it on? Yeah. Questions? Oh, oh no, I have a... Okay, okay. Please, ask a question. Uh, can you see it? Uh, no, I'll read it out. Um, so the question says, are the results for AQC and quantum annealing taken from simulations, not quantum annealing machines? Um, yes, yeah, so the... We only have results for AQC, which were um, from simulations, and the quantum annealing... The instances that are hard for quantum annealing were taken from... Um, the paper brought by Croissant and their co-authors, um, and that was implementing um, essentially the same thing as AQC, but with a constant duration. So for most of the instances that were generated, they were in the adiabatic regime, but for the instances that were selected to be hard, the success probability was very low, so that's why I called it hard for quantum annealing. 
um, but it was a simulation, yeah. Questions? You have five minutes for this question. Any question online? I have a question. Any idea on how to combine quantum work and AQC? Uh, yeah, so um, there are more sophisticated, um, so do you mean, so here what we're looking at is just running them in parallel, right? Um, but there are also more sophisti sophisticated hybrid strategies um, that my coworkers have worked on. Um, so you can have hybrid quantum walk and AQC and you can have rapid quenches. Uh, so this is just the simplest case of a hybrid strategy where you just run both algorithms, um, maybe one after the other or in parallel or something like that. Any other question? Well, if no questions, let's thank this speaker again.